launch, Porsche's first battery-powered model, the Taycan, was billed as the company's first all-electric sports car. Can a sports car also be an SUV? Porsche's insisting that it can, and to prove the point has bought us this Taycan spin-off model, the Taycan Cross Turismo. Porsche has now long been a company as much about SUVs as sports cars, so it's natural that the brand's EV development should reflect that. The eye-watering level of investment needed means that it needs to anyway, which is why the Taycan range was broadened in 2021 to include this crossover body style, available in both Sport Turismo guys and in this more SUV-like Cross Turismo form. Now it might look like something from a Spielberg film and a car that can't quite make up its mind what it wants to be. Uh, Porsche doesn't like calling it an estate, but this cross variant is likely to be the most popular of the Taycan models going forward and, uh, a little surprisingly, does have a degree of optional prowess for limited use off a paved surface. Sounds intriguing. So what's it like? Well, when you get into the car, a Taycan graphic displays on the instrument screen in front of you before three virtual dials spring into action. There's a big Dyson-like start button behind the right-hand side of the steering wheel. You won't need to release an electronic handbrake because the car has sensed your presence and does that for you. All you've got to do is snick this little gear shift rocker switch down into D. You're ready, but for what? Well, quite a power rush. Um, all Cross Turismo derivatives are almost indecently fast for anything purporting to be an SUV. Even the base 4 Cross Turismo variant has 476 PS and gets to 62 miles an hour in just 5.1 seconds on route to 137 miles an hour. This 571 PS 4S version improves those stats to 4.1 seconds and 149 miles an hour. Both the Turbo and the Turbo S variants develop a standard 625 PS and have a launch control feature that for short periods can boost that to 680 PS on the Turbo and as much as 762 PS on the Turbo S. The latter as a consequence able to demolish the 0 to 62 miles an hour sprint in just 2.9 seconds. More important perhaps than the sheer speed are two other attributes. First, this Cross Turismo's low slung stance means that it doesn't really roll any more than a conventional Taycan sports saloon, or if it does, I couldn't discern it. Uh, which is nice if you want an SUV without any dynamic downsides. Secondly, the brakes are brilliant, progressive, and as usual on an EV, mainly driven by the regenerative system. The latter, by the way, can't be controlled with steering wheel paddles. There are instead simple on, off or auto options on the central screen. Even with on activated, there isn't ever really a one pedal style of abrupt slowing off throttle. The Cross Turismo shares the same powertrain options as the normal Taycan, save for the fact that it can't be ordered with two things most customers for this Porsche EV don't tend to want anyway, a rear wheel drive and the smaller 79.2 kWh battery pack. All variants get the Taycan's usual twin e-motor setup with the rear unit driving a two-speed transmission with a shorter initial ratio optimised for initial acceleration. The standardised 93.4 kWh performance battery plus setup will take the car anywhere between 241 and 283 miles depending on variant and the conditions, though not if you exercise your right foot, as you'll be tempted to. None of the dynamic stuff in play here is anything we haven't seen before. Uh, torque vectoring, adaptive damping with three chamber air suspension and optionally rear wheel steering and PDCC electromechanical roll stabilisation. But with Porsche's 4D chassis control setup coordinating it all like the conductor of an orchestra, the result through the turns is quite simply astonishing when you consider the amount of weight in play here. 
and the steering, brakes and ride quality are all brilliant, almost 911-like. No other large SUV, EV or otherwise drives like this. The soul of a sports car, that about covers it. There are four main drive modes, normal, range, which ekes out your battery charge, sport and sport plus, the latter activating Porsche's rather weird electric sport sound oral accompaniment, if you pay the extra to have it fitted. Uh, this ebbs and flows with the perambulations of the electric motor, a tube train like orchestration you have to be in the mood for, but it'll probably impress your passengers the first time you activate it. Pay the extra for the optional off-road design package we have fitted here, and you get a fifth drive setting option, gravel, which adds an extra 10 millimeters of ride height so you can make assertive progress down the kind of rough, unpaved roads that would damage an ordinary Taycan. You'll unsettle your passengers if you do that, though uh, there are no comfort oriented drive modes for what Porsche calls chassis options, uh, the adaptive damping setup. With that, you choose between normal, sport and sport plus settings, with even normal delivering a pretty firm feel. If you're using the gravel setting on an unmade road, you might want to activate the two raised chassis height options for the air suspension, lift and high. Your other ride height settings for high speed use are lowered and low. You can have this crossover style Taycan design in two forms. We have the more SUV like Cross Turismo model here. The alternative is the Sport Turismo model, basically the same car but without side cladding or raised suspension. Our focus here, as I said, is on the Cross Turismo variant, which sits 20mm higher off the ground than the standard Taycan Sport Saloon, or 30mm higher with the off-road design package fitted as here. Now both the Sport and Cross Turismo models have a nose section differentiated from that of the ordinary four-door Taycan by this specific front apron. The unusual profile is defined by a sporty fly line that slopes towards the rear, ending in a high gloss black fixed roof spoiler. These enhanced black plastic wheel arch trims are intended to underline this model's sporty crossover character. And as on the saloon, there are flat door handles that are flush with the doors and pop out electrically when required. Here at the back, there's the usual wraparound full width Porsche light bar and quite an avert roof spoiler. Most Cross Turismo customers pay extra for the off-road design package that we have here, which as well as 10 millimeters more ground clearance in the chassis medium setting, gives you special flaps integrated into this lower rear diffuser. You'll also find them in the side skirts and on the front lower valance. Right, let's take a seat up front. As you approach and unlock the car, the door handles spring out to greet you. Inside, as you'd expect, things are much as they are with the Taycan Sports Saloon, though you sit a little higher and a compass mounted on the top of the dashboard is optionally available as part of the Sport Chrono Pack to give more of an SUV vibe. As with every model in the Taycan range, classic Porsche design staples here mix with modern technology. The instrument cluster is wider than the steering wheel in a manner reminiscent of the original 911. Take a closer look though, and you'll find that what lies behind the chunky three-spoke wheel is anything but retro. A 16.8 inch curved digital screen, one of up to four here at the front of the cabin. There's a lower 8.4 inch touchpad on the center console, um, just below a 10.9 inch PCM Porsche Communication Management Central infotainment monitor, which can be optional extended with a further supplementary display for the front passenger. There's a lot to take in. All of this feels entirely appropriate to a cutting edge 21st century premium EV, but you can't help sometimes feeling that old fashioned knobs and buttons, particularly on this lower center display, would be easier and more intuitive to use on the move. 
There are other curiosities too, this rather hidden knurled dash mounted gear shifter. Plus you're not offered any sort of handbrake button and there are no mechanically operated louvers for the air vents either. You have to activate them via this lower screen. Still you adjust to all of this quite quickly and the instrument screen in particular has been well thought through based as you can see around these three configurable round virtual dials. The main interior design changes that differentiate this Cross Turismo though are at the back and let's start by taking a look at the rear seat. Inside there's a modified roof line which enables rear seat passengers to enjoy 47 millimeters more headroom than in the lower slung Taycan Sports Saloon. And that's not compromised much by the huge optional panoramic glass roof that we've got fitted here, which floods the cabin with light. Though unfortunately it doesn't darken at the press of a button like the one in a rival BMW iX. Clever so-called foot garages scooped out of the EV floor plan mean that there's plenty of space for your feet. You don't get this middle part of the rear bench as standard, that's only supplied as part of an extra cost 4 plus 1 package, which you may not want because you'd struggle to take three folk back here, thanks to the kind of overtly high central transmission tunnel you'd think an electric vehicle wouldn't need. On top of it is this tray, just above which are twin vents and a cubby. You get coat hooks on the B-pillars and an armrest with cup holders, but the door bins are small and the seat backs lack pockets. Right, let's finish by inspecting the luggage areas. As you'd expect from this Cross Turismo model's more SUV-like body style, the boot is bigger than that of the Taycan Sports Saloon, increased from the 407 litre total you get uh, with that EV sedan, to 446 litres here. Once you lug your stuff over this rather high loading lip, you'll find this quite a practical area. There are recesses either side, a netted storage area on the left, and a 12 volt socket on the right. Plus you get this small underfloor compartment for the charging leads. If you need more room and you specified that four plus one rear seat package that I mentioned earlier, then the rear seat's usual 40-60 split will be changed to the more flexible 40-20-40 split arrangement that we have here, which means that long items like skis can be pushed through between a couple of rear seated occupants. If you need more room and flatten everything, the luggage capacity figure rises to 1,212 litres. Given the lack of an engine here, it'd be nice to have a bit of extra stowage space under the front hood too. A rival BMW iX can't give you that, but this Taycan can. Lift the bonnet and there's an additional 84 litre front frunk compartment. Okay, let's get to pricing. We'll quote figures applicable at the time of this test in early 2022. As we mentioned in our design section, there are two versions of this crossover style Taycan design. The Sport Turismo, or as here, the Cross Turismo. This latter model differentiated by extra body cladding and a higher ride height. Porsche expects this Cross Turismo variant to be the favoured Taycan body shape and it'll outsell the conventional Taycan Sports Saloon too, helped by the fact that once you take everything into account, there's very little price difference between the two. With both the crossover versions of this body style, Sport Turismo and Cross Turismo, the top of the line Turbo and Turbo S offerings are the same in powertrain and much the same in price. Either way, you're looking at around £118,000 for the 680 PS Turbo or around £140,000 for the flagship Turbo S. Further down the range though, things differ quite a bit with sport or cross versions of this body shape. Only the Sport Turismo offers an entry-level rear-driven single motor 408 PS model priced from around £74,000 at the time of this test, 
But that and the next model up in the Sport Turismo range, the all-wheel drive Taycan 4S Sport Turismo, which costs around £85,000 and puts out 530 PS, both come a standard only with Porsche's smaller 79.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. With either of these two base sport variants, you have to pay around £4,500 more for the larger 93.4 kilowatt hour performance battery plus package which we think would be an important additional spend to make. Range capability is already limited in this Porsche compared to obvious rivals, and you don't want to make things worse. The mid-range Sport Turismo model, the all-wheel drive Taycan GTS Sport Turismo with 598 PS, does get the bigger 93.4 kilowatt hour battery as standard, but it also gets a much higher price tag, around £105,000. Here, as I said earlier, we've chosen to test the Cross Turismo version of this model. Now, all Cross Turismo models get the larger 93.4 kilowatt hour performance battery plus package and all-wheel drive as standard, which helps to justify a higher starting price for the Cross variants. At the time of this test, the most affordable Cross derivative, the Taycan 4 Cross Turismo version, which puts out 476 PS, cost around £82,000. Here, we've chosen to try the next model up, the Taycan 4S Cross Turismo, which at the time of this film's compilation cost just over £88,000 and puts out 571 PS. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll note that this output is 41 PS more than the 4S Sport Turismo variant, which helps to compensate for the fact that there's no GTS variant in the Cross Turismo range. Got all that? Good. Rivals, uh, there are only two obvious ones. Uh, BMW iX starts from around £70,000, but it needs to be ordered in bigger battery X-Drive 50 form to match the performance of the mainstream Taycan 4 and 4S models. In that guise, it costs £92,000, or £4,000 more than the 4S Cross Turismo we're trying here. A Tesla Model X dual motor all-wheel drive is the other obvious option. Uh, that car costs closer to £100,000 but offers the class-leading driving range this Porsche wishes it had. If you've got around £100,000 to spend on a luxury EV like this and don't mind switching to a saloon, Mercedes offers its EQE, uh, starting price is just over £80,000, and its larger EQS. Uh, there you're looking at around £100,000 upwards. If, having considered all these options, you still want this Cross Turismo, then you're going to need to know about standard equipment. Well, all Taycan Cross Turismo models come with the same single-speed transmission on the front axle, with a separate two-speed transmission on the rear axle. There's also adaptive air suspension, including PASM, that's Porsche Active Suspension Management, which adapts damping to road conditions and to the drive modes that you've chosen. There's also a sport mode for the activation of dynamic performance settings, including launch control, and range mode for the activation of efficiency-orientated settings. E-performance stuff includes an 11 kilowatt AC onboard charger and a 50 kilowatt DC onboard charger for use of public charging stations with a voltage of 400 volts. Your Taycan Cross Turismo will be ready for DC charging at public charging stations with a voltage of 800 volts, but disappointingly, Mode 2 and Mode 3 charging cables cost extra. Like all Taycans, this one features full LED auto headlights that include the PDLS Plus Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus system that dips them automatically at night. Other common features across the range include thermally insulated glass and auto-deploying door handles. There's also auto wipers and a powered tailgate. And you get all-round park assist parking sensors and cruise control with a speed limiter. And in case of theft, there's the PVTS Plus Porsche Vehicle Tracking System Plus Tracker Setup. For the cabin, there's a multifunction sports leather steering wheel and two-zone climate control that you can activate in car or via the Porsche Connect app to precondition the cabin, cooling or warming the interior before you reach it. 
There's an active carbon fine dust filter that keeps particles, pollen and odours away and thoroughly filters fine dust from outside air before it can enter the interior. And like all Taycans, this one uses a 16.8 inch curved display central infotainment screen which offers up to five different configurable views. This houses the PCM, Porsche Communication Management Setup, which gives you online navigation, mobile phone preparation, audio interfaces and voice control. There's also a seamlessly integrated Apple Music setup that allows you to stream up to 60 million songs ad-free and access playlists to suit your driving mood. New Taycan Cross Turismo owners get this feature free for the first six months of ownership. Not so good is the fact that the PCM setup's Porsche Connect smartphone mirroring capability serves only Apple CarPlay, not Android Auto. As usual with Porsche, it's possible to spend a further fortune on the options list, which you'll need to do if you want all of the handling systems the brand offers, including a rear axle steering setup for sharper cornering and a tighter turning circle. Before getting to all of that, though, we'd suggest that whatever your Cross Turismo model choice, you'll need to save some extra budget for the optional off-road design package that we have here. This offers a selectable 10 mm ground clearance increase in the chassis medium setting. It gives you an extra gravel drive mode and adds neat design flaps in the rear diffuser, the side skirts and the front lower valance. Other key extras that, budget permitting, we'd want to add include the huge fixed panoramic glass roof, uh, the Sport Chrono package, which gives you a central compass display on the dashboard, and the 4 plus 1 rear seat arrangement, which gives you a centre berth on the rear seat and a more flexible 40-20-40 rear seat back split. All those key features have been fitted here, along with a few others. A Bose surround sound system, ambient lighting, a cabin ionizer, a surround view camera setup, and auto dimming exterior and interior mirrors. As for the Porsche electric sport sound feature, which adds audible theatrics as the electric motor ebbs and flows, well, that's a matter of personal taste. Try before you buy. What we think you will need is the tyre sealing compound and electric air compressor kit that you'll require in the event of a puncture. Bear in mind too that if you want to use really high powered chargers you'll need to pay Porsche nearly £1200 extra for its onboard AC charger with 22 kilowatt package. Annoyingly the Mode 3 public charging cable costs extra too. Remember as well that you'll almost certainly be paying your local Porsche centre more for your choice of colour. We've got ice grey metallic here. Many owners want their own choice of wheels too. We've got optional 20 inch Taycan turbo design rims fitted in this case. Along with the off-road design package, uh, black side window trims and model designations in black. All of it costs extra. There are any number of interior design packages you can choose too. Uh, here we've got Porsche's leather-free interior. Maybe you'll want to combine this with 14 or 18-way powered front seats. Enough with options, on to safety. As you'd expect, there's a whole portfolio of available camera and radar-driven safety and autonomous driving tech. A collision and brake assist system alerts the driver both audibly and visually when it detects possible collisions with other cars or pedestrians, activating an emergency stop function when necessary. Uh, there's also lane keeping assist, which warns you if you inadvertently cross lane delineating lines and uh, subtly steers you back, and traffic sign recognition, which pictures speed signs and displays them on the dash. For driver and front passenger, there are full-sized airbags, knee bags and side bags, plus curtain airbags along the entire roof frame and on the side windows from A pillar to C pillar. There's PTM, Porsche Traction Management, Traction Control, PSM, Porsche Stability Management with ABS braking and integrated Porsche 4D chassis control. 
A multi-collision brake feature will automatically apply the brakes after you've hit something so that you're less likely to go on and hit something else. And there's a rollover detection system for activation of the curtain airbags and seatbelt pretensioners. Uh, other passive safety features include TPM, that's tyre pressure monitoring, uh, an active bonnet and Isofix child seat mountings. Most Taycan Cross Turismo owners will want to pay extra for adaptive cruise control, which works particularly well as part of the Porsche InnoDrive system. That's also extra. This can look ahead for up to two miles as you drive using radar and sensor feedback plus predictive GPS data before then modifying speed and gear shift strategy to better suit the speed limits, uh, the topography, road features and traffic flow that you're likely to encounter. Active lane keeping, uh, traffic jam assist, lane change assist and night vision assist features are also available if you've got deep pockets and a special rear bike carrier can be fitted too. You'll be wanting to know about WLTP rated driving range. Well, it's some way off what you get from a comparable Tesla Model X, which manages up to 348 miles in dual motor all wheel drive form. The exact figure with this Porsche depends on your model variant choice, though as we told you in our market section, all Cross Turismo versions are fitted with Porsche's larger 93.4 kilowatt hour performance battery plus, only 83.7 kilowatt hours of which is actually usable. The base taken for Cross Turismo variant will take you 242 to 283 miles. The Taycan 4S Cross Turismo I'm trying here manages 241 to 281 miles. For the Taycan Turbo Cross Turismo, it's 245 to 281 miles. The Taycan Turbo S Cross Turismo will take you 241 to 260 miles. You're probably going to need to engage the range drive mode setting to achieve these figures with your Taycan Cross Turismo, which you won't really want to do because this will soften throttle feel and restrict climate system output. The key difference with this EV over most of its rivals lies in its 800 volt power supply, which is double that normally seen with electric cars, and is based on tech trialled by Porsche in its Le Mans winning 919 hybrid race car. The idea here is that by pushing up voltage, you can drop the current without affecting power output. Lower current means faster charging times. Using a 9.6 kilowatt hour wall box, replenishment will take about 10 and a half hours. A more common 7.4 kilowatt uh, garage wall box would take slightly longer, around 13 and a half hours. If you want to do better and your home has access to three phase electricity, the brand will offer you a wall box upgrade to the Anderson A2 system, which can reach speeds of up to 22 kilowatts, though only if you paid extra for the optional onboard AC charger with 22 kilowatt package. Using that, you'll be able to fully top up the battery in just over four hours. As usual with EVs, there's a downloadable application allowing you to set charging times and precondition the cabin remotely. It's the Porsche Connect app. And for when you're out and about? Well, Porsche is keen to talk of the Taycan Cross Turismo's peak charging capacity of 270 kilowatts, which theoretically means that the 93.4 kilowatt hour battery can be recharged from five to 80% in just 23 minutes. That's at an 800 volt charging station, and currently there are only a handful of those in the UK. A more easily located 400 volt public charging station will take about an hour and a half to do the same thing, providing you pay Porsche extra for the optional onboard booster, which increases the car's standard charging peak from 50 kilowatts to 150 kilowatts. Uh, what else? Uh, well, the service intervals are every two years or 20,000 miles, and insurance for all variants is a top of the shop group 50. If you're choosing a Taycan because it's a more practical version of what an electric 911 might be like, then you'll probably like the Taycan Cross Turismo even more. It manages to feel both involving and commanding to drive and, like the standard Taycan, is stupendously quick in its fast performance. Also like the standard Taycan though, it's uh, EV range figures are some way from the class best. 
But since a typical owner will have several other combustion sports luxury models in his or her oak timbered garage, that shouldn't matter much. Of greater importance is whether the dawn of time looks represent the statement that you want to make at the golf club. If you're happy with that, make sure you tick the off-road design package option a must have if said club is at the end of the kind of rutted track that might ruin a conventional Taycan. Actually, a drive in one of these might ruin a conventional Taycan for you. In many ways, it's the next stage on. <laughs>